Why is this match important, Pete? Um, because Ken and Akisaki gets his mask taken off. That had happened before, but oh. that is fair enough. Is it because this is the match <gasps> that destroyed British wrestling <laughs> for good? Part of the reason for that is because it seems it was very unpopular with people who watch British wrestling still. Right. And there were a huge number of them, but it went out on the 15th of October, 1988, and the decision to cancel wrestling after 25 years went on December 19. 19- 88. So that was basically a month and a half after this match. Right. Um, Greg Dyke, who was the uh, controller of ITV1, he announced that they were cancelling wrestling. Um, it had run since 1965 as part of World of Sport. It featured things like the darts, the wrestling, quite yeah. working class mm. sort of elements to mm. it. It didn't have any of the fancy sports. It was more, you know, let's go to the local thing over here. Yeah. Let's go to the regional thing over here. And it looked very unfashionable. It I did, guess yeah. The... And Greg Dyke looked at that and he basically said, this is not what ITV should be doing he mm. said a line at one point where he said we want itv to be more like sainsbury's than the co-op um, and wrestling actually survived world of sport being axed mm. but what happened was it was moved from tea time to lunchtime so it went to about half 12 and it actually really affected the audience quite badly because what it turned out was the audience were primarily working class and most work didn't finish on a saturday until uh, lunchtime yeah. it was a half day on saturday mm. and so with it moving to lunchtime no one could watch it mm. so the the audience figures began dwindling. It's an astonishing sort of thing about how there was this absolute attack on what was seen as being non-middle class mm. attitudes. Mm. It was a very unpopular decision when it was cancelled, but it would have been more unpopular had it not been for this match. <laughs> <laughs> you got Blondie Barrett there. He calls himself the Rock and Roll Express. That's also yeah, that Nick from America. Like Nick, yeah. um, he was a frequent tag partner of uh, Kendo Nagasaki throughout the 80s. Right. Um, he, I uh, saw an early match with him in it, teaming with a guy called Bobby Barnes, and they described him as they went... Uh, Here he is, the turbulent gentleman, (laughs) Blondie Barrett. Hello, I'm right (laughs) now. And they are going up (laughs) against the Golden Boys, who are Steve Regal, and the Liverpool lad, Robbie Brookside. Nice. He's Uh, named himself after Brookside, hasn't he? He has, of course, a big hit. Annoyingly for ITV, that was a big hit for Channel 4. Uh Uh, (laughs) Don't want you on the show much. Regal, of course, would go on to become William Regal. Or Coronation Regal. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the most Perfect. celebrated British wrestler in, you know, pr- I mean, certainly in the modern era. Mm. Nobody d- did better than William Regal mm. because nobody was working at the time William Regal was doing it on his own. Yeah. There was nobody else. And it's there inexplicable was... that he still talked like this. War Games! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? War Games! War Games! War Games! War Games! War Games! It is amazing that his voice has become that. Almost like if you saw someone (laughs) who was a good American impressionist and they went, um, I'll just show you, uh, for example, a regional variation, how someone in Blackpool talks. Bloody hell. (laughs) Sound a bit like David Bowie. (laughs) Really strange. But Regal does have that sort of... Christ on a bike, you know. <laughs> yes. Slightly sort of end of the pit. He is a marvellous performer. <laughs> what you see here is you see him at the start when he's actually, what he's not doing is any comedy, which he would sort of really become, I mean, at, at points, the only professional wrestler on television who was incorporating comedy into, mm. his, into his act. You see him here and he's a young man who is just all about the fire and the, you know, mm. I'm the good guy, the blue eyes, and, you know, I'm going to fight, fight, fight. It is funny to see William Regal without the most important thing about him, which is his charm and <laughs> incredible, veteran ability to sell everything it's funny to see the young (laughs) regal here robbie brookside would also go on to become a big sort of trainer he would have a long career in this dead british scene in in all these years Uh, do check out on youtube uh, robbie brookside video diaries it was a uh, the bbc gave a load of people a video camera when they first came out and said you know make a documentary about your life and he did a brilliant one uh, about being a professional wrestler and it's about him visiting william regal who has suddenly signed with wcw and it's about him going over to florida and the two of them just hanging around just you know just mithering about it's just <laughs> it's sort of magic Jasper Georgia unbelievable 99% into bread and the other 1% of in some form or another I hope the Amsterdam's on this kid could eat an apple for a tennis racket Robbie Brookside would go on to become one of the trainers in NXT. That idea about this unbroken chain of just knowledge its being passed from one generation Mm. to the other with wrestling. It's such an exciting way of doing it. You know, there are no books that say this is how to be a pro wrestler. All there is is the old blokes just saying, no, don't do it like that. 
Grab him there. <laughs> Come on, man. Think. <laughs> um, no. Back again. Does everybody understand what your left foot is? Yes, sir. Step forward with your left foot. How many times do you have to be told this? God, I'm not asking you to drop on your head. I'm asking you to step forward with your left foot. Step forward with your left foot. That's all you've got to do. There. Right, there right. we go. Is it me that's intellectually malnourished here or is everybody else? And you have Kendo Nagasaki. And Kendo Nagasaki, at this point, he is 42. He's been <laughs> wrestling for 24 years. Jesus. He doesn't look it. The great thing about being a masked wrestler is if you can keep going, then your face doesn't let you down. People yeah. don't go, oh, he's got no teeth anymore. His face is all sunken. <laughs> they are just, oh, that's Kendo Nagasaki. Yeah. There's some nice stuff here. I mean, you see the British thing, which I love, like the, you know, Kendo Nagasaki receives his first public warning. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, bold, get public warning. Yeah. And, and everyone trouble. cheers. Yay. Uh, public warnings were like yellow cards in football. Yeah. Except in wrestling, you had to get three before you were disqualified. <laughs> so uh, I think at one point they say, Blondie Barrett on his second and final. Final public, public warning. warning. <laughs> um, three is too many. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> too but, excessive. Um, Barrett gets knocked out after they've split a fall each with mm. a missile drop kick. Again, Brookside was doing stuff. I get the impression he was the only British wrestler at the time who was watching stuff from other countries. Um, Kent Walton, who is the, the commentator on here, there's a bit where Kendo is there for, uh, on his own and Regal and Brookside begin double teaming Kendo. And there's a bit where they pick him up to do a heart attack clothesline. Mm. So this is 88. The Heart Foundation had been around since 86. They've obviously seen it there. <laughs> and Kent Walton just goes, uh, he goes, oh, that's a new one. He says. <laughs> so he obviously doesn't watch American wrestling. No. The two of them then do a double drop kick, and Ken Walton just goes, Two man drop kick. Don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> it's really like, Oh, you, you know what it is then? You are just a little closed shop. It's just, it's just magic. A two man drop kick. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The heart attack clothesline <laughs> they do is terrible. They've obviously never tried to do it. They've gone, we should do that. Do that you know, the, yeah. the Hart Brothers do. You, know, <laughs> you lift him up, I give him the old. They go, that'd be spectacular. Spectacular. <laughs> and they do it, and you, no one knows quite where to hold Kendo. When they do it, it just looks shit. It's really, really bad. <laughs> and, I mean, the crowd love this match, it's worth saying. They absolutely are edge of their seats, roaring and cheering. Mm. And it is a really, really, really hot crowd. Mm. Robbie Brookside goes to pull off Kendo's mask as everyone always does and surprisingly he does <laughs> yeah the mask comes off brookside is holding the mask in his hand and kendo just looks at him and brookside sort of goes Ugh, like that. and he has hypnotized robbie brookside <laughs> as, as, as kent walton has been told what's happening now if you're watching this in the room you'd have had no idea what's going on <laughs> kendo nagasaki looks at robbie brookside and Kent Walton just says, <laughs> Nagasaki using his powers to force his opponent to turn on his partner. He's got these hypnotic powers. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's got these hypnotic powers and he got Brookside to turn against his own, own man in the corner there. That is a brand new one. That is a first. He hypnotizes Robbie Brookside to attack his partner, mm. Steve Regal. <laughs> he, he compelled me to do something. Uh, referee. <laughs> he's, he's a scouser, isn't he? Oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah. some complaints. Here we go, here we go. Try he, and get it he right. He compelled me to do something. <laughs> Hey, referee, that man's just done something to me. Compelled me. Compelled me to do that. He said. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little offensive. Um, but what's really nice about this, the crowd die. Mm. There is silence in that room. It is absolutely silent. Yeah. And rather than go, oh, that fucking Kendo! <laughs> they just they just go, oh. <laughs> As a wrestler, you must be like, this is all toss. Why are you suddenly, why at this point did we lose you? Yeah, I when it went into the third fall, you can <laughs> see that Regal and Brookside have no absolutely no idea that what's going to happen in the next few minutes is going to be met so badly. <laughs> they are like, this is clearly going to work. Because actually, everything we've done in this match, the crowd have been massively behind. Mm. They are a hot crowd. <laughs> By the time William Regal has been knocked out and they have to call the match off, yeah. it's silent. People, and it's not people <laughs> going, what's just happened? It's people going, ah, oh, right, okay. I, uh, <laughs> do you know what? I wanted to believe this was real, you know? And do you know what I get? Uh, do you know what I get from all my friends and family? They go, you're not going to watch that old shit, are you? And do you know what I did? I came here and I was really enjoying that. And <laughs> then, then one of you got hypnotized <laughs> <laughs> and you attack your partner and now that's over and that's all done. It is 
a proper, a proper disaster. Mm. Now, there is an yeah. argument to say that that could have been the moment where seeing the response, see, well, if you watch that as Greg Dyke, when Kendo Nagasaki hypnotised a man mm. and the crowd died, I think you'd go, do you know what? I think we've had enough of I this. I think we've had enough of if this. If they hadn't have had that match, if they'd have just had a sporting bout, mm. maybe, maybe Greg Dyke would have gone, well, it does get good figures. <laughs> but that thing about going, I'm not happy having a fictional Japanese man <laughs> hypnotise a scouser and call it entertainment, you know? Um, oh, so that could be the death <laughs> of the entire scene. Um, what I found really touching about this, when you talk about, you know, how great Kendo Nagasaki is, in this match, he's introduced by his manager, Gorgeous George Gillette. And Gorgeous George was a very, very flamboyant manager. Unusually in wrestling, he was a flamboyant manager who was also legitimately gay. Mm. Uh, legitimately, legitimately gay. Legitimately as opposed gay. to these illegitimate gay he people, I mean. Gay matches, we. <laughs> yeah. Shoot gay he was guys, legitimately gay. And he did not hide that at mm. all. Mm. He was an openly gay man. Mm. At the time when he's you know, introducing everyone here. He says something, there's a little bit at the start where he introduces Dire Straits' drummer. <laughs> he says, this is someone, it's Dire Straits' drummer, isn't that right? And the guy goes, yep, Dire Straits' drummer, where he's just like, hey, he cured his bad back. Well, let me tell you, Robbie Brookside and William Regal, <laughs> you're going to need the same treatment because you're going to have bad back too. That's gorgeous George Gillette. And what right. you can see when he's talking in the ring is he is very, very emaciated. And that's because in 1988, the year that this match took place, and this is in October, he would die within the next two months of complications from AIDS. In 1988, to die of AIDS is not like living with AIDS in 2020. No, it's... Yeah. It was a disease that had no cure. It was a disease that was just full of fear and prejudice. And people legitimately did not... They didn't really know how it was transmitted. There was a fear that it could be caught off toilet seats. What the whole thing about AIDS was, was if you were near someone who had AIDS, there was a chance you were in danger. Oh, it so was like... It, the ostracisation like, of these mm. people, you know, who suffered so badly is insane. Yeah. What you can see here is that Kendo Nagasaki has never ever said to George Gillette I think you know it's probably time you stepped away he's got two months to live and he's right in the ring there with Kendo mm. Kendo is standing by him he stood by him throughout his entire illness he nursed him through the final days and I just I mean what a sort of unbelievable amazing life mm. Kendo Nagasaki has lived and all of it just seems to be He's just unbelievably brilliant. I can't, I, I just can't get enough of it. He is a proper magic person. Mm. Yeah, absolutely magic. Ladies and gentlemen, these two things. 